Have you ever wondered how much your salon, spa, barbershop, and business is worth? Well, you're not going to want to watch anything else or listen to anything else except for today's podcast to get the answer to that question. See you guys today. Salon owners are some of the most amazing people on planet Earth. The only problem is sometimes their hearts are so big and they give so much of themselves to their staff and guests that it creates unintended consequences. Our goal is to change the industry by elevating the way the rest of the world sees salons, spas, and barbershops and give it the credibility that it truly deserves. This is the Salon Owner Evo Revo Show. Man, if this is not the hot topic of the day, Doug, I think there are so many companies out there that are trying to figure out, like, what's my salon worth? Whether it's to bring on, you know, salon, spas, barbershop, really any business. Like, if they want to bring on shareholders, if they're trying to solve a partner dispute or get a partner to buy in, if you don't know what the value of your business is, you're going to create a lot of chaos, a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes just so that I'm not delusional with my business. I don't think I've got a, a multi-million dollar business when maybe I've got a small, or maybe I've got a smaller business that's worth a whole lot more than I thought. I think it's just good to be grounded in what a realistic value of your business is. Because again, so the whole thing, if you're not aware of it, you can't manage it. You can't make it worth more. Uh, you can't offer the right people into your company if you don't know what that number is. Yeah, and and by the way, this has come up a lot. You know, I, I've had it come up in partnership disputes. I've had it come up in just you know trying like even going to the bank, like for me trying to figure out what what is my what is the business worth, right? Like how does it work and what do we do? And so I've got a really good friend of mine uh, that I, I invited on the show today. Her name is Laurel Johnson. Laurel, are you there and with us? I am here. Hey, How are you guys? The... Hey. <laughs> so good to see you. Uh, Laurel and I have known each other, I think it's been eight to 10 years, somewhere in that range. It's been a long time. And what, what I love about Laurel is she is a negotiation expert. She does coaching and training and helps people to negotiate uh, for value in all types of areas of their life. But most importantly, Laurel, I've called you so many times to be like, okay, I got another business evaluation question. I need some help. And you're also a business broker. And so you are actually on the street helping connect buyers with sellers to make sure they understand the real value of their businesses. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I've, I've just uh, actually next month will be my 21st anniversary, which Holy is- Holy mother. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. I'm the Congrats. only woman owned business brokerage practice in central Texas, but I am actually winding that business down. I'm doing more coaching and training, but have yeah. loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved helping small business owners exit. I love it. Well, I know I know you're an amazing coach, trainer, and speaker, and I, I'm really grateful to have you here. By the way, if you're watching the show and you're curious about what your salon's value is, do me a favor and say value, because Laurel, what I'd like to do today as we go through the podcast is I'd love to find out there's kind of like a you know quick, maybe you could do on your own valuation that's kind of like a general guide to give people an idea, but then there's these different tiers, right? There's like more professional layers, then there's more complicated, like official hold up in court kind of layers. Can you talk to me about the different types of business evaluations and the difference between an evaluation and evaluation? You bet, you bet. So evaluation, uh, business valuation is a very difficult topic because it's not like a house. When you go to value a, a piece of real estate. Um, yeah, there's no Zillow. Yeah, somebody can find a house just like yours. They can find a house that has that same square foot footage, same floor plan, same location, and pretty much guess or assume that your house would sell for about what their house sold for. Mm -hmm. But with businesses, it's very, very different. You can have a salon with 16 chairs and been in business for 10 years on one side of the street. And then you go across the street, there's another salon, 16 chairs, been in business for 10 years, completely different valuations. Yeah. So there are a lot of what we call intangible aspects to valuation. Um, so that's the first thing that's very difficult because every business is different. Every salon is different. And because the humans are different. So, and how they handle things. <laughs> True. You know? True. <laughs> so True. It, to answer your question about the different types of valuations. So there, and e, you know, th th there's a lot of jargon around there. So let's just kind of simplify it. Shall we? <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> and, clear the deck on that. Let's get yeah. the <laughs> terms out of the way. 
So an appraisal of your business is is a, a business valuation that's done by a, a certified business appraiser. And people who are permitted to call themselves that have to meet certain standards and guidelines, not only in education, but also in what percentage of their business is done doing appraisals. In other words, they got to be doing appraisals all the time. Um, so sometimes there'll be no disrespect, but CPAs will do evaluation or other people will do evaluation. They do one or two a year. And, and yeah. so the SBA doesn't allow those to be called business appraisals. Okay. So that's why there well, are a lot of different, one. yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, words <laughs> substituting for appraisal. So at the end of the day, um, a business valuation and what, what most small businesses are looking for is they want to understand what would my business sell for if we took it to market? Totally. So that's what we call a fair market value. And okay. that's what I'm, I do. I'm taking notes as we go here. I'm taking notes as we're podcasting. Yeah. It's what I do is it, what's called a calculation of fair market value. So that would be just a, a very good estimate of if we took this business to market, what would it likely sell for to somebody else? And then right. we go from there. Then we look at the partner interests and so forth that we're going to talk about today. But, and, and so, so in terms of those, th those are sort of big rocks to kind of set in people's understanding of the different types of, of, of valuation. What most business owners need is a fair market value of their business. Right. So they can, because I mean, they can kind of get a general idea. Like Doug, what, when salons come to us and start talking about uh, values, what, what are their two main reasons or three main reasons that you would say come up for them? Uh, usually it's because they're looking to have someone buy into the business uh, is one of the main ones. And the other one is, you know, if they're, they've got a partnership and one of the two or three of them is looking to exit that partnership, uh, how do we know what's fair? Because I mean, the thing is, uh, you got to get a realistic number in there because the one wanting to be bought out always has an inflated number. The one wanting to keep it always has a deflated number. Yeah. So you know, we just got to get to one where it's fair and we have a, a, a real number that we can look at and then negotiate from there of what that structure looks like. But you got to start with that real number because if you're living in fantasy land on either one of those ends, then any negotiation you're having is really not worth anything until you have a number that you can depend on. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, that's that's what we're talking about here today. So, Laurel, I mean, I've heard this example before, right? It's like it's a multiple of your profit of the company. Talk to me about how if you were talking to a salon owner and they wanted to have a like rough idea of what their salon would be worth, what would be a good multiple in the salon space? If that's even a question I can ask, like what's the like, you know, the down and dirty roughest evaluation of a yeah. salon? Well, certainly there are those those rules of thumb, we call them. Yeah. The, the tricky part about using those is that if you apply that number to profit, people have different ways of calculating profit. Sure. So it, it, the number that you're applying that multiple to is really what's most important. Yeah, it's like, are they taking out the owner's salary from the profit? Are they paying managers correctly? Are they taking out their the owner's behind the chair income from that profit? But let, let's assume it's it's a clean profit. I know that's yeah. probably not the case, and I appreciate you saying that because that you know to your point, the profit could be a skewed number. Right. But let's assume that's the case. Is there a general multiple in the market that you can use? And I only mean to just kind of get a guide, and then I want to get into the next layers of what you can really do. You bet. So this is going to be a pretty broad range, but this okay. is the real answer. It's going to be one to three times that number. That that. Okay what you call the clean profit. So right, they, yeah, they, that, this, this mysterious clean quote unquote yeah, profit yeah. that we think there's about. different terms like EBITDA and this and sellers discretionary earnings. We just want to have. And so we, all those things that you mentioned are, are really impactful. So one to three is a pretty big range yes. and that whether it's going to be on that one side or closer to the three side, those are where all of the other factors of the business come into play. Got it. And yeah, and so we okay. can talk so, about that. So that kind of at least gives you a range. Like if you're just kind of scratching right. your head saying, hey, what's my business worth? This at least gives you a starting point, right? right. And then there, you said there's two other layers that kind of go along. One is an evaluation that you do. One is like from an, from a, a, a valuation 
uh, company that can give you kind of that that rundown. Talk to me about um, uh, how you do a, a fair market value, like you were yeah. talking about, like what it would actually be posted for sale, and just kind of give people an example of what something would kind of look like in there. Yeah, room. so the it, it, interesting thing is I go through the same process that an appraiser would go through. Uh -huh. So we collect financial documents, we collect the last three years of the business tax returns. Mm. And if you are not incorporated, that would be your Schedule C. And then also the last three years of the year-end profit and loss statement and balance sheet of the, of the business. Mm -hmm. We collect a list of the physical assets and the owner's estimate of what the fair market value of those physical assets. So they might be all depreciated on your balance sheet. They might, your right. balance sheet might say that they're worth nothing, but they are worth something. That's just a artificial number that the IRS right, for taxes. Uses. Yeah. So the fair market value is, well, you know, if you decided to sell one of your chairs, which you could probably sell for, you know, if you were looking to buy one that's yeah. same age and same, you know, what would you likely, you know, so th those numbers. <clears throat> and then we look at what what's so key in salon valuations and it differs so greatly is the owner's role. The, so if the owner is a stylist, we have to look at their production and also look at the model of the salon. Is it chair rental? Is it commission? Is it a combination? Um, maybe you've got chair rental and then you as the owner are, are just you know doing commission for yourself in your own production, but it's in the numbers. So we have to look at where is that revenue and how does how is it accounted for? Um, so collect all that information. Also, is the business paying for anything for you, the owner, that, and you're showing it as an expense on your profit right. and loss statement, yeah. and that expense won't be there if you're specifically, you are not the owner. I've seen everything from country club dues to um, my teenager <laughs> cell phone to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, so, the, you know, all the mysterious things that still get to be written off. Yeah, and I remember exactly. this because, you know, I, I at some point looked into purchasing uh, several Massage Envies uh, as part of the Massage Envy franchise, and that was one of the biggest challenges was, you know, they'd send over their P&Ls, they're like, well, we got to back this out and that out and this out and this out. And all of a sudden you're kind of looking at this mess of paperwork because they're trying to sell something that they're not really clean on, right? And so by the way, if this has been helpful for you guys so far, would you do me a favor and comment what's been the most helpful? Or if you hear something really helpful from Laurel, do me a favor and drop it in the comments just so we keep it rolling so that we know uh, what, what are kind of the, the big value nuggets uh, that are coming from this. And by the way, we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to find out, um, Laurel's got a, a way, a very simple way to give you that fair market valuation. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you how you can get a hold of that when we come back. And we're also going to talk about how do you get a valuation that actually stands up in court in case you do find yourself in a legal pitch. So we'll be right back after this short break. So we're here talking with Laurel Johnson about how do you figure out the value of your salon? And I'm not talking about, I think it's worth millions of dollars. I'm talking about what could you actually sell your salon for? And Laurel, um, you've got a really cool way to do that. And I think you've got a pretty, like it's a, it's under a grand, right? For them to be able to uh, get an actual fair market valuation. Tell me about that. Just so if people want to track that down, and if you want to get access to it, do me a favor and say, I do in the comment, but tell me about that, Laurel. You bet, you bet. So I have a valuation company that I have worked with for 15 years who do, who do a vi very wide range of types of business valuations, including the kind that hold up in court. They actually were the company that helped drive valuation guidelines for the Small Business Administration when SBA loans are done and so forth. And I have a joint venture with them. We've created, uh, or they've created a product that they've actually permitted me to use because of my experience. So good. And I'm able to do their own, their, the calculation of value report. And it's a fair market value opinion. Uh, and so I'm able to offer that for 995, which nice. is uh, a very great value compared to what they typically sell for. But because of my long relationship and 
Um, I don't do them. I don't advertise this at all. Right. I don't <laughs> like do you can't, a high volume you of these. You can't go this on a website. You, Jason. <laughs> right. I know. We talked about that. It's like, this is something that we really wanted just for people that are in our world to kind of find out about. Because I've kind of like, in a good way, Laurel, used and abused my privilege of knowing you to get some of these done for our clients. And I want to just open it up for our salon owner community because I think it's a really big deal. And just if you guys are interested in that uh, and you want to find out, do me a favor and say, uh, I do, if you want to find out about how that service would work inside your salon. Because I think, Doug, for you know, for $9.95 for a, a salon owner to figure out how, to, how, how could a partner exit? How do you start uh, bringing in uh, shareholders? How do you do that? I think you know, under a thousand bucks is well worth that. Yeah, Doug? Yeah, I mean, just having, having something that you can stand on. And I think that, that uh, whether it's shareholders or whether it's partners doing it, having it that uh, you both agree to use this. You're both agreeing to use the document that comes out of that. Um, so I, I think that's really solid that you get that agreement. You've got a something you can stand on. This isn't the one that's ironclad and is going to you know, stand up in court under heavy pressure, uh, but it would stand up in, the, in the, the fact that you both agreed you were going to use it. You both said this is something that we're going to use and work off of. Um, but, yeah, so I think it's a great place. Because the other one, and I think uh, we could talk about that one a little bit. The other one, if you get one that's going to stand up in court, um, you know, you give us an idea of what that would cost. Yeah, they th those things aren't cheap. They start at ten thousand dollars, usually ten to twenty five thousand dollars. And no, most small ten, business twenty five grand yeah. out of your negotiation <laughs> budget. That no, who cares? It's just money, right? Jeez. And those really aren't usually necessary, even for small business owners that are in some kind of dispute. They like yeah. to Doug's point. They just want to be fair with each other. So, but I want to also just point out that it's a good idea to find out what your business is worth anyway, even if you're not planning a sale, even if you're not welcoming a potential partner, because here's what can happen. Something can happen in your life and all of a sudden there's a need to sell your business. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to know what it might be worth. Another thing that can happen is someone could approach you and want to buy your business. And if you have no idea what it's worth, how are you going to negotiate? So it's a good idea to have a business valuation just to know what is my salon worth to Doug's point. You don't want to, and both of you have made this point, you don't want to have an unrealistic expectation because a lot of times we do think our businesses are worth more than they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so let's get grounded. The other thing I want to just point out in the, the value of going through that process is it forces a business owner to really take a good look at their business. Now you guys, because I've worked with some of your clients, you guys do a fantastic job of training salon owners and uh, I I want to just acknowledge you because oh, the, the you. ones I've looked at are top shelf. So uh, anybody that's listening to this podcast, if you're not in the High Performance Academy, you need to be because I personally am seeing the results of it. But also that process will help you look at your business perhaps in a way that you haven't and you'll learn what the value drivers are. And that process can help you maybe tweak your business a little bit and make it more sellable because there's there's the, the valuation, but also there's sellability. Mm. So how sellable is your business? And I can help with that as well. I really like what you just said. I think that it's important that Realize that if I get a valuation, find out where I am, and then you can help give them advice. This is these are the numbers that you would need to tweak inside of your business to dramatically increase your value. Rather, this is an area you need to reduce if it's right. debt or other things like that, or this is a number that you need to grow so that they do it. So then you can, you know, then like with our clients, they get very specific and say, okay, help us grow in this area so that we then can sell our business. So they say, me, I'm to manage what you know. Because a lot of times people don't know, so they don't know how to manage what it is. So it, it get out of, I hope it's worth this stuff this much, to I know it's worth this much. Right. And I know how to increase the value of that company. Well, we, fact, were recently, we were recently talking about, you know, does, does your salon look successful? Or is it truly successful? Um, and right, it's like, to your point, you could have dozens of staff members and have zero profit. You know what I mean? Like, and that, to your point, I think makes a big difference. I, I want to get this question that came in the chat. Uh, Lisa, I think it's Serato, asked, does a month-to-month -month rental decrease value? I assume what, what the question is, is if I have chair renters in my salon and they're on month-to-month, -month, does that decrease the value versus if they're in a situation where they're in longer term? I don't know if you have a quick answer on that. But well, love, typically yeah. not, just because um, I'm seeing this across the board. I mean, contracts are very hard to um, enforce. And mm -hmm. so... In general. You know, yeah, in general. Now, if you do... I, I it, 
would it increase the value if you had a true rental model and all of your stylists were on bona fide lease contracts that are pretty airtight and they can't get out of them without buying their way out? That could bump value a little bit, but that may, you may end up shooting yourself in the foot because it, I would just based on my experience, probably be pretty difficult to get stylists to agree to that. So I don't think that the offset of the risk on your business in terms of attracting really strong stylists um, and, and keeping them stable, stability is what adds more value than mm. the type of contract. So if you've got stylists that have been with you for 10 years, that, that tells a new owner, wow, they're doing something right at the salon. That's a good location. Um, management is responsive to their needs and wants. So I would focus I on it. stability and low turnover rather than the contract term. Laurel, this has been wicked, wicked valuable. Uh, my Bostonian just came out to say wicked value, wicked awesome. Uh, but here's the thing. I'd love to know if you were to give business owners, salon owners, spa owners, barbershop owners, two tips that they could do to make sure that their business would be worth more. What, as a coach, as a trainer, as somebody who's seen these for a long time, what would be two areas that you need, you could point them to, to say, stay focused in these areas and you would grow the value of your company faster than anything else? Okay, um, so one is make sure your financial records are up to date all the time and you know where every penny's going. Mm. So too many business owners really have just sort of this general idea and what you, what you focus on expands. So right. you wanna actually really know what the heck is going on in your own business. And if you don't understand the numbers or if they kind of gloss over, get some help. So because are, you talking, so are you talking accounting up to the week, up to the month, How, what, what's all the time in your mind? I would want you to have certain factors that you watch every single week. So every business has their things they watch. So um, you, you want to know what in your business, what is it? You know, is it is it number of haircuts? What are you tracking mm -hmm. on a week to week basis? But certainly every single month, sit down and do a review with your profit and loss statement and know what happened right. and what needs to be tweaked. and what's, That's one thing. The other thing right. as a salon owner is to make sure that you have your production if you are a service delivering owner which many many salon owners are make sure that you the the amount of revenue that you're producing two things one is it's accounted for separately so you can easily pull that out but mm -hmm. also that the salon itself is not relying on that that it's profitable without your production yeah yeah because That's if you went away value. let's say you know you had you're making two or three hundred thousand dollars a year off your salon but a hundred thousand dollars of that is your income well clearly that's not as powerful as if and if the salon's majoritively making money because you're there right. you own a job you don't own a business at that point right as we've, well there's nothing yeah. wrong with that if you want to own a job that's fine i mean a lot of sal sure. salon owners you know <laughs> they have their stylists pay for all of the overhead and then the profits their own production it's just that's not going to create a sellable business Love so it, it depends on what you want to do to exit. Love it. Love it. And yeah, I, li I like what you said is, is depending on what you want to do to exit, any other advice you could give people at the end here, just as we're getting this last one last golden nugget I'd love to love to get from you, Laurel, is in, in exiting, what best piece of advice could you give somebody upon exiting, whether they're selling or they're exiting out of a partnership? What would be a good piece of advice you would give somebody who wanted to exit a salon? Plan for it before it's time. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that what you're it's it's kind of yeah it's very it's an excruciating process to figure out what your salon is worth when you're faced with having to sell for one reason or another you have a partner that wants out you have a health issue there's some crisis in your life that necessitates the sale of your business and you have no idea it's excruciating yeah. and and also when we do a calculation of value, then we can see what may or maybe some challenges in the business that you have time to correct before it's time to sell. So that would be the one thing I would say, do it now. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So if you guys would like to get a, a, uh, a fair market value for your business, like I said, comment below and say uh, say market value. I think I said something else earlier, but let's do a market value now. If you guys wanna get access to that, I'll make sure you guys get plugged in with Laurel so she can see and you guys can get connected. And uh, Laurel, this has been really, really helpful. Again, you've helped so many people inside of our academy. You've helped Doug and I. Uh, you just have helped so many people and we're gonna be doing more with you inside our High Performance Salon Academy for our members. So if you wanna have, if you wanna kind of have some more preparation about how to prepare your business inside our High Performance Salon Academy, we're gonna be bringing Laurel in. She's gonna do some workshops with us. I think, Laurel, we'll work, we'll work it out. We're, We'd we're love to do that. So. We'd love to add value to your clients, you bet. Yeah.
I, I love your heart. I love what you're about. And I just love your personality. So Laurel, thank you so much for being on today. Again, I will point as many people to you as I can just because I love, love, love working with you. And thank you for an excellent podcast with us today. Uh, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Important topic. Good for you to bring it to the attention of your clients. Awesome. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Laurel. And by the way, if you enjoyed this podcast, do me a favor, give it a rating, head over to your favorite podcast platform and make sure that you let us know that you actually like it or you comment on the videos below because without your comments, without your eyeballs, without your responses, this podcast doesn't make it to the eyeballs that it needs to be in front of or the ears that it needs to be listened to. So thank you so much for listening today. Laurel, Doug, have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Evo Revo podcast. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe, leave us a review, and you can always get more information, including show notes and the video episodes at evorevopodcast.com.